some of the amazing things I should describe is his extraordinary passions, love, passions, and the way he was teaching, committed to transmitting the experience. I think I went through in such a multi-dimensional, packed, emotional relationship. So every layer when I see, feel, so much is coming out. It is like I am feeling my own self and opening it and showing. See, whatever you go through with so much of passion, gets settled in you so much. How many ever times you narrate that you will not be tired or bored? How many ever times you remember that you will not be uh, tired or bored? Because the packed emotions you went through with that incident or with that happening is so intensely packed. See, if I have to tell you, it is like a hundred bag of gunny bag of cotton. He rolled it into one, this gunny bag. Like a he... He is 100 gunny bag cotton. He rolled himself, packed himself into this one gunny bag. So he has packed himself so much into me. So much has gone through. See, one, the dimension, the way he was teaching. And the second, the dimension, how he was educating me by his behavior. See, teaching is different, educating is different. Teaching is different, educating is different. Through his behavior, the way he was educating me, that's what I described now. Like, in one mirror he will not appear, in the other mirror he will be there. So I have to go back and sit and scratch my head. This scene was I in higher consciousness or in this scene was I in higher consciousness. So during this scene was I more aware or during this scene was I more aware. Based on that, I will come to the conclusion this scene is the right. Higher reality. Highest reality. Not this. So this whole thing is educating, where by his behavior, I evolve. Teaching is like a sharing certain idea, certain truth. And then the next level is sharing the experience, putting me into the experience directly. Every day, every day, there will be some story or some question, something I will ask. When he answers, I will see that very clearly. It just becomes a reality in front of me. It is just reality. See, immediacy and ultimate always does not go along hand in hand for all of us. If something is ultimate, it cannot be immediate. If something is immediate, we don't believe it is ultimate. God cannot be such a stretchable distance. If I stretch my hand, I can touch him. How can that be God? If it is God, it has to be somewhere where I cannot reach. This strong self-denial in me, he broke. Actually, that breaking also, he did it in such a way, I have to break. Understand? Without, if he, if he gives a confirmation, for example, he gives darshan with a thousand head and thousand hand, like a Mahasadashiva, 
if he gives darshan. And then, me breaking the idea, oh, he is God only and he is immediate. I don't think that is ever practical because even after seeing Vishwarupa, when Krishna became two, the normal form, that six feet, two hand form, Arjuna lost the impact of that Vishwarupa on him. Understand? So, the disciple has to break that God cannot be immediate, immediate cannot be God. So, the whole drama between him and me, it was like a... Mm, He has to give all the experiences he has to give. But I have to break that pattern of... See, what is, what is that basic pattern, you know? How can God be so immediate? It is a self-denial. I myself feel I cannot be ultimate. So ultimate cannot be so close to me. That's a root self-denial. The whole game and the play was such. He, without confirming, but by his tremendous love, I should literally say romance. Actually, I tell you guys, my relationship between him and me was never psychological. It was literally physical. <laughs> by the very love, The courage I gained, or he made me gain, the vatavarana, the ambience he created, vatavarana means the atmosphere, ambience he created, was such, I myself broke that self-denial, that how can ultimate be immediate? See, if you understand, how many of you understand you have that pattern? How can ultimate be immediate? If you see, the root of it is nothing but self-denial. You believe strongly, you are, hey, I am my immediate and I am not ultimate. So same way, <laughs> anything my immediate will not be ultimate. That self-denial denies the highest possibility. And the atmosphere he created was so beautiful, the Vatavarana he created was so beautiful, he made me courageously break that self-denial pattern. Yes, it is ultimate and immediate. I'll describe when he made me break that. <laughs> Another one biggest thing is, we have our own scales and methods and convictions to measure which miserably fails. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> miserably fails. <laughs> and <laughs> that <laughs> miserable failure of our scales and cognitions and perceptions Fortunately in me, when I miserably failed, I decided to celebrate it. I was not terrified about it. See, when I miserably failed, by the time I failed itself, I felt the love layer of him. I only felt when I fell, I fell on his lap, not somewhere else. So I was enjoying about it. After two, three times, I myself started losing faith on my scales. That scale cannot be mixed or matched or fixed. That is not the scale with which I should be measuring this. Wrong scale, like a, for example, if it is a cloth, you can measure it with a meter, centimeter distance. 
Can you measure the cloth in liter? <laughs> Can you measure the milk in centimeter in <laughs> meter? So the exchange of the units of physical, units of physics being used for units of chemistry, or the units of chemistry being used on the units of biology. The wrong application of our earlier convictions. Actually, this everyone goes through. Everyone goes through. In their own scale, in their own level, in their own methodology, in their own, what to say, terminology, in their own ideas. So each one goes through their own. Some people think, oh, if he Sadashiva, why is he wearing gold? As if they know that Sadashiva never wore gold. <laughs> they will read in some book, a great yagi cannot wear gold. And these fellows don't even understand, I neither remember it is gold, nor remember it is mud. I wear it for the people who are enjoying it. That's all. This body itself, I am wearing for the people who are enjoying it. So on the body, what I am wearing? <laughs> the way he teaches, the way he gives experience, all that are like a unique. I remember very clearly, once I was talking about asking about this past and he was describing something which I could not grasp immediately. So he has to draw a diagram and show there was no board or anything. He just picked up a stone. On the air he, he drawn, I saw the board. And <laughs> in the air the whole thing is appearing. He just picked up a stone which was there next. And then just he started drawing in the air. And the air was behaving literally like a board. And what he wrote, I could see. <laughs> and he was describing about past. And then, very casual way, he just cut that where he wrote like a past, present, future. He just cut where he wrote past. And I saw very clearly it is opening up and I could see the past flowing. It's literally like a touch screen Photoshop. Small, small, small incidents I can go on be describing. Once he was talking about an Agama, and a very beautiful description he was giving about a concept. I was hearing, but I was thinking, wow, not only I understood, I wanted to explain the same way to others. The moment I had this thought, he asked me to stretch my tongue, and he had a small trishul. He took it out of his vibhuti bag, and he just wrote something on my tongue and said, I give you my walk. <laughs> and still, I can say, there is no concept which can't roll in this tongue and come out as <laughs> a clear. <laughs> Whatever may be the principle, philosophy, whether it is physics or neuroscience or cosmology or physiology or medicine or Anything, any concept, any theory, engineering or architecture, any theory, any philosophy, if it just comes in this tongue and the tongue rolls and when it opens, that's all. Not for any pride I am saying. And you see, what I am talking, you don't need a separate witness. See, listen to anyone satsang. It actually, after that blessing he gave, 
I give you my work. Once I was admiring his eyes and the way he was sitting, we had, we finished lunch and after the lunch, he is such a clean person, hygiene person. After lunch, he will never let me uh, sit without washing that vessels. That two, three vessels I am having, two, two, and in that two, there will be three cup, cup with that uh, covering. In that, in one it will be sambar, in one it will be uh, poriel, means the vegetable, and in one it will be pickle, and in small pepper, there will be salt. So, if it, more salt is needed. So, he will make sure I go to the temple tank and wash all that and come back and keep only then I can continue to sit with him and talk. So, after lunch, he was sitting and I went, uh, washed the vessels and I was running, ran and from distance itself I saw the beautiful way he was sitting and the sun shining on him. It was noon. Noon. He was not sitting on the sun. He was sitting in the shade. But the, the, I could see the sun falling on him. And the, the, and he was chewing the beetle leaf. Pan. After the lunch he was having pan. And I was admiring the whole farm, the way he was sitting and the moment I saw him, my speed of running increased and came and just threw that both the <laughs> vessels aside and just hugged him with so much of love. He hugged me and just like how you hold the kids cheek, he just held and I opened the cheek, he was having the tambulam. Just he put the tambulam into my mouth and said, I give you my body language. The exact word he used, I give you this. See, what I was admiring, he said, I give you this. <laughs> he just, I could see the word, he, the way he uttered, when he, when he said, he just, when he was moving the hand like this, what I was admiring, enjoying in him, he just took that and put it with the tambulam and I give you this. The way he gave me, I can say At least 98 times, if he has given 100 things to me, 98 times, I only wanted, never asked. Maybe maximum two times, I asked, opening my mouth. 98 times, literally every time, I only wanted but did not ask, even if I admire. You see, what you admire? You admire only what you want. Admiration is nothing but secret crush that you want. So the moment I admired, he just knows. Very clean, hygiene person. And... But will not bow down in front of deities and all. How I bow down in front of deities? I have not seen him bowing down in front of deities and all. He will not bow down. He will walk straight up. He will walk just like that only. Very bold body language. Simple, but I have never seen him humble. Humbleness is not... I have not seen him... Humble means bowing down. Those things I have not seen in him. How you guys see me, I, I'll bow down in front of every deity. That, at least I have not seen. Hmm? 
I don't want to say whether it is there or not and all that. I have not seen. Feeling like so much is there to tell what to say, what not to say, what to describe, what not to describe. Yes, this is the spot. Many times he used to sit. I will sit one step down. See, actually he will sit in the higher step and I will sit one step down, usually holding his feet. That's a little shade area near the Arunagiri Vishra Mandapa Mandi. Hmm. I walked with him in the hill, climbed the hill or went round the hill, many places. <coughs> Even the present ashram, that time that land did not have a fence backside. Backside, there is a Kannapa Swami temple. We used to come and sit there. The temple actually is in this property. So because the temple is in this property, we used to come literally sit in our present ashram property. Because the property did not have a fence backside in those days. It used to be just attached to the temple. Now we made a separate fence. Otherwise, the temple is inside our property. Once he was talking about an Agama called Sarvanyanotra Agama. See, that is the Agama through which you should understand all the Agamas. That's like a final word about Agamas. It's called Agamanta. <coughs> he was describing. I said, why only through this we should understand everything? For that, he was telling me, eh, if you are wearing the green glass, the whole thing will look green. If you are wearing red, the whole thing will look red. When he uttered these words, he just touched the air. I suddenly saw the whole thing green. When he utters the word, eh, if you are wearing green glass, what will you see? Literally. As if the whole thing, I am seeing through the green shade. And when he uttered the red glass, if you wear the red specs, how you will see? In Tamil, you are say, saying, means he was telling how the, if you see the red specks, if you wear, how it will, I still I remember even the pronunciation, not Sigappu Kannadi, Seppu Kannadi. That's the village pronunciation. <laughs> and if you wear the red specks, how you will see? When he says, I literally saw through the red prism. So he was explaining how the prism you wear defines your vision. So this Agama should be the prism you should wear and see the whole thing. Understand the whole, whenever you have a conflict to come to a conclusion or meaning. Come on, now let's come to the real story. So one day I asked him, take me to your cave. He said, all right, come, what is there? And the mandapam we showed you, that's exactly the place. Usually it will always be, I will only hold his hand. But that day, he just held my hand so tightly, I still doubt he did not take my physical body. He just pulled me out of the body and took me. See, the way he held my hand, it was so strong. The way he held, right hand only, here only. Just the way he held and pulled me, because there is no way physically you can get into this place. Please, all of you see, 
he walked inside and he took me inside and this is a complete stone slab it's a sealed there is no opening here and i am very clear he only walked into this and took me inside so from the law of physics i do not have answer he walked in and he pulled i think it took maybe 2 3 minutes we walked into the darkness and then opening when the opening happened i saw a huge banyan tree we are already on the hill huge banyan tree but the funny thing is that banyan tree is a physical place i have already um, traced that in the google map it is there in the google map the banyan tree is there that's a physical place so when i when we entered the banyan tree i saw there was a seat some few elderly sadhus were sitting the long beard and jata and they were sitting and meditating the moment he walked in they all got up and did namaskar they fell at his feet the way he went and sat on the seat i understood he is the guru of that place and all of them are his disciples that i could see very clearly he was young but all the people were very old with the long beard and jata and all of that i thought maybe it is his, all of them are his disciples and i also sat actually i was wearing my school uniform the in indian villages even if you don't go to school you will wear only the uniform <laughs> because <laughs> because one you have to show to your parents you are going to school only that school uniform and above one towel only one trouser and i sat all of them were sitting somebody asked something and he was answering it was some light conversation something was going on in the conversation one elderly person looked at me and said casually he is the only one who is not a sanyasi in our team something about sanyas and then my kundalini gotten ha ah, i am also sanyasi not wearing clothes that's all because i had a strong <laughs> pride of being that sanyas from the young age hmm? in the villages the always this uncles will teach swimming for the kids so when my uncles wanted to teach they put all the kids into the well with that bottle gourd bottle gourd they will tie it on the hip and just push them into the well then kids will learn swimming when they wanted to teach swimming i said no i am a sanyasi sanyasi cannot learn swimming there is a tradition sanyasi should not swim or he should not light his own uh, um, cooking fire like this there are few things nowadays we don't because we started crossing the ocean those days all these rules were made because sanyasis were very small number they were not allowed to do any risky things so because the small number they wanted to be it's a they should be protected so that is why all risky things like a crossing the ocean lighting your own fire cooking and uh, what to say that swimming all these were banned not to do anyhow so that day, that, that time it's like i said no i am a sanyasi i will not learn so immediately i said i am also sanyasi i am not wearing the class then arun yogeshwara smiled and said you want to wear you want to have clothes also i said if you give give then he looked and one elderly person sanyasi he ran somewhere and got on set this this is the cloth this cloth is the witness for the whole thing and he got the cloth i 
I remember a two piece. Now we are having only one. I do not know where the other bit has gone, but I remember it was two piece. And when the class came, he was about to give. Immediately I just removed my clothes and threw it and came <laughs> naked. I ran to him, and he himself tied the cloth around my hip. The dhoti he himself tied and just inserted. And then the towel, he put it on my shoulder. I remember. That is why I am saying it is two piece. It's like one like a dhoti, this, this piece. And he just tied it and inserted. And then the towel, he just stretched and put it on my shoulder. Of course, only now when I studied sannyas Patati, I read that you are supposed to go naked and receive the sannyas class. That's the way the sannyas is received. That's a tradition even now. In Akada, Akada Andal, even now, whoever takes sannyas, they have to walk naked from the river. Only then the Kavi is given. B, because of the so social we have become a social organization, so they, they just take dip and come with a wet cloth and I give the class. But in Akadas, even now, this is what is followed. Anyone has to walk naked in public. And that is the way the class is given, whether male or female, anybody. And even now, female Nagas, thousands walk naked during the Shahi Snan. Not only male, even female Nagas walk. This Kumbhamela also they, they walk, Ujjaini, this time also. It's a tradition. And later on only I came to know, that time I, when I did, I did not know. This was the Padukas, which I gave and he used and returned. He put the feet on it. <laughs> I made it with a village carpenter, the local village carpenter. <laughs> That time, <laughs> now how many <laughs> full gold, thousand padukas we may make, but nothing can equate this. <laughs> I still remember, two and a half rupee was the salary, and ten rupee was the wood. Wood cost was ten rupee, two and a half rupee was the salary. The carpenter took to make this. <laughs> In those days, and still his footprint is left. The footprint is there because he used for quite a few days and gave. The li light line you can see. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Actually, because that line is there only, I did not want to cover this in gold. I thought I'll cover the whole thing in gold, but that line will be will disappear. So I didn't want that line to disappear. That's why I didn't cover it in gold. I just left it as it is. Hmm? It's made. And this also, this I took it and gave, and then he used for a few days and blessed and gave. This he himself gave. This I did not take. That is why this we are not able to trace what material it is. And this is the banyan tree we trace in the Google map. See that whole thing is a single tree. That whole thing is a single tree. So he gave the kavi, we sat and we were discussing some more time and then he said, come on let's go. I said okay and again he held my hand very strongly and pulled. In few minutes I woke up and I saw I was here. We both were standing outside the that samadhi. That is why I have a serious doubt. The place 
banyan tree was physical but the cave was not physical he pulled me out and took me into turiya means different plane and again brought me back to jagrat in the cave sorry in the banyan tree and when he brought me back he took me to turiya and again brought me back to jagrat so i don't think this body moved through the cave but this body was taken to the banyan tree it's like a, he took me and transported the body and put me again into that body and then he took me transported the body and put me again back into the body body came in yuval service because the the way no way through this way my bo- physical body has gone but the bani entry is physical even after all this after my the the sangha has happened everything at least two three times i went and saw the tree and even after this incident and everything when i described it to raghubad yogi and kuppamal we were all able to go to the tree and see the tree yes yes it is in tirunamalai exact same place same uh, even the step means the uh, seat on which he sat was exact shape it was not different everything was physical so it was a i think the play between turiya geeta turiya and jagrat the three states of consciousness and how many ever times i tried to take the other people to that bani entry they can all see but nobody can go near because there's a intense frequency around that bani entry if people go try to go down that valley they will fall sick vomit collapse and come back they will not be able to go i will casually walk near the tree the people who come with me will never be able to walk that valley is the only area that is the, that valley is the boundary where human beings are allowed nobody else can walk in you can see but you can't walk in i tried multiple times multiple times ramana maharshi says even he tried he is not able to take anybody ramana maharshi talks about this tree he talks about this tree he went but none of his disciples could go still the tree exists still the tree exists you can see but you can't go near if you walk it will be like a mm, that ma- that mm, matrix movie high frequency the attack it will be exactly like that that high frequency vibration where you will feel giddy vomiting you will collapse anyhow now starts the real drama he brought me back and left me in this body and when i when i was back i was wearing only this color this dress i was wearing this cloth and this cloth and the trouser was missing it was not there over i was wearing only this i was just in ecstasy overwhelming ecstasy he earlier told me once very casually don't tell anybody don't talk about this not even don't tell like a, don't talk about it it is like a not a big instruction but a idea was conveyed not to speak about it to anyone and everyone so i never used to speak about what i am going through with him or what i am seeing and everything to anybody even my small small plans are such a way that i don't speak much to that even to that watchman i will not speak much i'll say you just do this much that's all and <laughs> i'll not explain anything detailed and all that because his uncle and he also did this like a favor now i was in such ecstasy i could not keep quiet i ran to vibhudanandapuri 
my mentor you can see her in this photograph is she standing in this photograph with me me and uh, so i ran to her yes you can see in that photograph i ran to her and said party party on this swami gave me kavi that's all actually i expected she will really be happy hard she started screaming who is that fellow who gave you kavi <coughs> and do you know the meaning of it because she was she want to give me sanyas and who is the fellow who gave kavi do you know the meaning of it it, it means he has given you sanyas and actually she is not bothered about me becoming sanyas she has bothered more about she is not able to give <laughs> that was the whole thing because They, she knows i am a sanyasi and i'll be <laughs> having sanyas and she started screaming and then she started telling hey did really somebody gave or you stole from the shop <laughs> these kids always go and steal from the shops now that that's the usual thing that jaggery and sugar and <laughs> these small small things and ki all that they will steal from the shop and she started threatening me that i'll tell your grandfather my grandfather is a big guy in the whole market and we all have a pride about being his grandson and and we also have to supposed to be behaving like that to keep the family standard she started screaming i i don't think any sami gave you you only stole from a shop and you are telling me lie i said no i did not tell lie and really some sami gave he said who is that sami show me i said come i will take you and she was literally holding my ears <laughs> and dragging me and walking with all the speed and i was screaming leave my ears leave my ears but she was so angry she was holding my ears and then she was dragging and i was showing the way and she finally we reached in front of the sarnagiri gishra cave always never i need to call third time it's only swami sami that's all he will come out never i called him third time by second time he will be out and now i am calling swami 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 and he is not coming out completely shaken three four issues one he is not coming out second now this lady will not believe and the third she is already con convinced that i have stolen and she will go and tell my grandfather all this is going on into my system like a oh god i could have kept quiet without telling her and anyhow now she is not ready to leave she is telling call now let me see which swami is coming i said from here only that swami walked out i i showed the cave from here only he used to come out and go in from here only he came out wait he will come i'll call and then she got so angry she just slapped me in india it's usual it's not something no that is usual she gave a slap and then said hey to whom are you lying you want to say this is cave and then she sat and went into that pillar and dragged my head and hit my head literally on that wall <laughs> and said what do you mean by this is cave in tamil she was shouting yaatadaya matra idu kogane idu paarra kallu thoonra means stone slab suddenly it was the next shock who oh god then whole thing is a story or what it was like a literally reeling and it was it was a stone slab there's no opening that is his deity 
Arunagiri Ishra's deity, there was no opening. How many of you have seen that? There is no opening. Go and see. It's a complete structure. That's it. One side. Oh. So you will never come out again. I will never see him again or what? Did I do something wrong by telling about him to somebody? And then she is screaming in her high pitch voice. She is screaming and she is telling, now tell from which shop you have stolen. <laughs> she is standing on that argument only. I have to tell your grandfather. And at one limit, one situation I understood, I cannot handle this anymore. So I just looked at her and said, in Tamil I said, in the Sami Mele, in the Mala Mele, Om Mele, Avar Mele, Yem Mele, Satyamani Chodra, Avar Dham Andar, Avar Dham Kuduttar. Means, I told in Tamil, on Arunachala, on the Arunachala hill, and on you, on him, on me. I promise. He only came and he only gave. I just took my took her hand and put my hand on her hand and promise. I think that's the first energy session. <laughs> when I just slapped my hand on her hand and promise, something happened in her. Afterwards, she was not able to deny my words anymore. She just collapsed. She just fell on her knees. Now in her eyes, no more doubt. No more doubt. She asked, She asked in Tamil, at least tell me his name did you ask his name to him? Now, I have, I have come back to my innocence. I don't have to have the load of proving so I can be in my integrity. I can be in my original space. Because she is in the listening space. I said in Tamil, Arunagiri Yogi Shwaran Sonar Bhatti means Arunagiri Yogeshwara is the name he told me that as his name. That's all. She could not doubt or deny. She just fell at my feet. And she said in Tamil, Unmeliya vada, avara pakaradag nangalaan tavam pandra meda, dhenomandu pesanarada. She was asking, we are all just praying, doing tapas to see him. Did he really come and talk to you? Did he come every day? And she falling at my feet was too much. And when she said, we are all praying, doing tapas to have his darshan. And he himself came. And he himself came every day. I know for sure at that moment he is Arunagiri Yogeshwara and he was Sadashiva. He is Sadashiva. He is Sadashiva. He did not stop. Now the extreme pain that he may not come again. The extreme joy, he himself came and taught me the joy that with whom I was relating, 
who did all this with me is Sadashiva himself. That joy, the other side, he may not come, what to do now? Again. It's a space of Dvaita. You may know he is God, but you are not sure about his love and availability to you. You are not sure of his love and his availability to you. It is like if you have hurt somebody whom you really love, how you can't tolerate you, that was the space. It is like a mm. Bhagavatam beautifully describes this story. One Gopika, she was in love with Krishna. One night, she hears the flute music from the forest. Her husband was not there in the house, so she jumps out of the bed to run and see Krishna. You should know that there was no physical relationship because this whole Rasalila happened within the age of eight. By the time he was eight, he already moved to Mathura. He was out of Vrindavan, which in, after that he never came back to Vrindavan. So she was trying to run. She ran through the living room and when she was about to come to the main door, she saw her mother-in-law was sitting on the door frame and combing the hair of the sister-in-law. This scene goes on for the last 5,000 years. <laughs> Even now, if you go to Indian village, you can see this. And what is there to comb in that hair? I don't know. Removing this lice and the... <laughs> Day and night, this... Daughter will sit down and the mother will sit up on the door frame and all the hair will come in the one's hand and the, all the teeth of the comb will be lost in the head. But still they will be combing. And in the main door frame she saw the mother-in-law was sitting and uh, sister-in-law was sitting down and she was combing the hair. The Vyasa describes beautifully. This Gopika just, she put her one hand on the door frame, the, in, in, the inside door frame, and she was standing. One side, that flute music is awakening all the sweet, beautiful, best memories of Krishna and pulling her. The other side, <laughs> mother-in-law and sister-in-law are sitting and... <laughs> Stopping her, that stopping is creating so much pain, that calling is creating so much joy. Vyasa beautifully describes, in the churning, because of the pain of being stopped, she went through all the hell and exhausted all her bad karmas. Because of the joy of the calling and the memory of the calling, she went through all the heavens and exhausted all the good karmas. Because both karmas got exhausted, she just fell and became enlightened. It is like a, all the heavens she need to go through, she went through. All the hell she need to go through, she went through. All karmas are exhausted. She fell and got enlightened. I can say literally exactly that was the way it was going on in me. One knowing he himself came. And I literally chewed his tongue and took the tambulam. He himself taught. The other side, He's not coming now. He's not coming now. So did I hurt him that he is not coming? 
or is he not going is he never going to come again it was not crying but the tears were rolling literally the body was getting churned by the extreme joy and extreme suffering or whatever whatever i could not handle and even vibhudananda puri was not able to handle after that she just walked and went away to the house and i just lie down there itself and slept i should say whether i slept or fell into some space i just lie down there this happened maybe roughly around 8 8:30 by 11:30 the watchman they came to clean up that place they usually have that long hose pipe they will connect it with the pipe and hold that pipe and usually i'll be the volunteer for them i'll hold the pipe and i'll walk in the behind and they will be cleaning and going in the front and then behind me one more person with a broomstick you see first they will sweep and then i'll have to pour water then on the water they will clean they will spread the water so the watchman came with a pipe and he started pouring the water and he shouted at me saying hey uh, go go to the temple they are going to put the deity to the bed go and have darshan and come back and hold the pipe for me he was screaming in tamil they poda poda palli irukira time aachu po swami kumbitu vandu pipe pudi i used to be volunteering so he was telling run to the temple they are going to put the deity to bed have darshan and come back and hold the pipe for me so when i heard that sound i woke up and i know something that i am fresh and new i ran to the garba mandir those days not much crowd and sometimes even shivacharyas won't be there the whole thing will be completely empty i ran i saw no shivacharya was there and the deity they were not taken the deity to the bedroom and sometimes shivacharya has will tell me hey you go and bring because only one person will be there he has to bring devi and then sadashiva both so he will tell me you go and bring sadashiva because that's a short distance devi has to go to the other shrine and bring from there and so they will tell go and bring that it's a small utsav murti to uh, shiva mir i'll go and carry that and bring and of course that day no shivacharya spoke to me only the watchman said go and have darshan and come and hold pipe for me so i ran and i saw nobody is there i ran to the near the garbha mandir to have darshan and see whether the deity has been taken to the bed when i ran near the garbha mandir i saw i lifted my eyes and he was sitting there he was sitting there on the shivalinga it was not physical body this time it was shining light with all its glory as we describe how he was in kailasa and shining light with his powerful presence and wide smile the moment i saw i started screaming in tamil Swami, where are you going to go to the party? I don't want to go to the party. That means I told in Tamil that you were sitting here. When the party came, when Vibhudananda Puri came, I was shouting, screaming, and you did not come out at all. And he did not reply. He was smiling. I was screaming and I, I was running. The more closer and closer and closer I came, I saw this person is getting slowly diluted into this person understand this person was getting just dissolving getting dissolved so by the time i finished uttering the word you didn't come at all that i started dissolving i still remember 
I ran into the Garbha Mandir, stretching the hand. I could see his being stretched and touched me. The moment it touched, that idea of I got unclutched. I just know, I woke up to the truth. He is me and I am. After that, never I saw him separately, nor I missed him ever. I have never seen him separately after that, nor I felt missing him. It was the most powerful unclutching. It was so powerful, never again clutching happened with ordinary eyes. The ordinary eye got dissolved into the space of irretrievable. It is like unclutching from the ordinary eye and got clutched into that source. Instead of clutched, I should say, become one. Literally, I saw this entered into that, and that entered into this. Let that happen in every one of us here. What happened? That, that very same thing, I'm going to reverberate now into all of you and bring that same space, the temple Garbha Mandir. What happened between me and him? The same thing I'm going to reverberate now. Please sit straight. Everyone is ready? Please put your Atma Linga on your third eye. Please put the Atma Linga on the third eye. Let Atma Linga touch your third eye. Now, just witness all the thoughts happening, including the idea you have about you. Even the idea you have about you is the thought current. Witness everything. I will do the unclutching, you just witness. Shiva, 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 Sada, Shiva, 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 Shiva,
Try to maintain silence for next at least one hour. Because like a surgery, precise surgery, how the pacemaker is fixed in your heart, same way, I have put the unclutching into your Ananda Ganda. It's like a literally surgery happened in your consciousness. If you speak any words, they can delay this unclutching settling into your being. So if you just use only sign language and avoid eye contact and maintain silence for next one hour, it will help in a big way for you to digest this unclutching into your consciousness. Be blissful. <laughs> 